before you start using the NMR for the day, you want to sign in. So first write the date, your name, and instead of the nucleus, you're going to write shim, and then the time. Okay. Next, you want to come over to the plug by the door and plug in the pump. This sheet is taped next to the NMR. It shows you all the commands that you'll need to perform, what order you should do them in, and what sample you need for each. And then once you're done, you're going to enter the date, the time the command is finished, and your initials. The command is prep. So for that, we need the water sample. That should already be in the machine. So you want to come over and open up the machine and use the pen light to check if the water sample is spinning, which it is. Um, the way to tell if the sample is spinning is there's a little sharpie line on top of the bobbin. If you can see the sharpie line, it is not spinning. If you can't see the sharpie line, it is spinning. Once you make sure the sample is spinning, you can go ahead and close the lid again and come over to the computer. So in the computer, you're going to type down here and type prep and hit enter. After a few minutes, this box will pop up, uh, prompting you to adjust the spin rate so there are five spaces between each of these peaks. So you want to come back over to the machine. And adjust this knob until there are five spaces. This way is slower, which means there will be more spaces between each peak. This way is faster, which means there will be less spaces between peaks. Once there are five boxes between each peak and the peaks are not jumping around, you want to come back over to the computer and press Control Q. After a few minutes, the box will pop up again and it will ask you to adjust the peaks so that they're now two boxes away from each other. So you can go back over to the knob and... Once the peaks are two boxes away, come back over to the computer and press Control Q again. Once the prep routine is finished, the box in the top right corner of the screen will disappear. After prep is finished, the next step is shim. So for the shim routine, we need the 5% ethyl benzene standards. All of the standards are kept in the test tube rack next to the NMR. This one is the 5%. There are labels on them telling you that it's 5%. I tried. There are, I promise. <laughs> I promise they're there. Um, Once you've made sure your sample is spinning, come back over to the computer and type in shim. Hit enter. A box will pop up prompting you to enter a relaxation delay. Because we're using the 5% solution of ethyl benzene, our relaxation delay is 5. After shim is done, the next step is shim 2. So for shim 2, we need the water sample. So we're going to switch that out. And 
then come back over to the computer and type in shim2. Once shim2 is done, suprep is the next step. So we need the water sample once again so we don't have to change anything out and we'll just go right over to the computer. So you want to type in suprep, hit enter. So just like in the last prep routine, a box will pop up and it'll ask you to adjust the spin rate so the peaks have five boxes between them. And once there are five spaces between each box, you can come back over to the computer and hit Control Q again. After about 20 minutes, the machine will prompt you again to change the spin rate so there are two boxes between peaks again. Once there are two boxes between each peak, come back over to the computer and press Control Q. This time for Shim 3, which needs the 5% ethyl benzene solution again, so change that out. Come over to the computer and type SHIM3. Once SHIM3 is finished, the next step is to do detool. Now, this one doesn't have a sample next to it because we're not actually taking any scans. We're just going to come over to the computer. You want to type in Dtool and hit enter. And then all these numbers pop up, and there is a lovely binder underneath the sign in sheet. So you want to take out your paper, write the date, which your initials, and then all of the numbers go in order of the sheet. Now these numbers don't really mean anything to us, but if there's ever a problem with the machine, sometimes they ask you to read out the last four of a certain column, and it means something to the people who can fix the machine. Alright, so you notice I left this last column blank. That's because our next thing to do is the TMS reference. So in order to do that, you want to take a scan, so ZG, enter, just save it over the file PNMR, PNMR FID. Okay, and then you want to switch into nuts. bring up your last scan, so use A2. You want to take your cursor and click and drag until the TMS peak turns green, and then you can see down here that right now it's at 0 .507 ppm, so you want to write that down in the last box on the sheet. Yeah. So then you want to go back into PNMR, and type in FO for field offset. Type in the current position of the peak, 0 0.507, and then type in the desired position, which is 0, 0.00. 
And now your TMS peak will show up at zero. And the last step, if you're going to be running a C13 NMR, is to shim C13. So for that, we need a 90% ethyl benzene solution. So that is kept next to the 5% one. It also has a label on it telling you that it's 90% ethyl benzene. machine and first type in NU space C13 to change the nucleus to C13 and then shim. And this time, since we're using a 90% ethyl benzene standard, we want to use a relaxation delay of two seconds. Once you're done shimming, you want to come back over to the sign-in sheet and sign out with the time that you were done. And then if you're the last person to use the machine for the day, you want to come over to the plug for the pump and just unplug it. Okay. On the computer, you want to turn the monitor off, not the actual computer itself. And that's it.